What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Got another two hour mega mix for you. Just wanted to remind you guys that if you are enjoying these longer two hour videos and the daily uploads, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you end up enjoying the video. It really helps to support the channel and make sure I can keep making these daily uploads for a long time to come. If we could get to around 1,500 likes on these two-hour Mega Mix videos, I think that would be a good thing to aim for, since we've been getting pretty close every time. If you guys have any thoughts about the stories in the video itself, please be sure to leave them in the comments below, as my favorite part of making these videos is reading your guys' thoughts on the stories therein. Without further ado though guys, I will let you enjoy the next two hours, and I will see you again at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I went through a period not too long ago of going out on late night jogs. I used to go out running when it was earlier in the day, but I ended up for one reason or another, heading out later and later. I don't know why but I really enjoyed the feeling of being out and about while everybody else was at home, tucked up in bed. In a way, I felt proud of myself. I live in a rural area, so the streetlights were few and far between along the way. There were a few points where it was especially dark even, but I enjoyed it all the same. I'm not sure if it just gave me a rush or what, but I wasn't scared at all. I should probably mention that I'm a man and live in a very quiet and safe area. This happened while I was running through my area one night at around midnight or so. I had just turned off the road which led onto a country lane. I liked that route because I got to run alongside an irrigation canal. It was nice to hear the water flowing below and the croaks and chirps of the wild animals that lived within. The irrigation canal ran along a bunch of rice fields. It was an open area, which made me feel free to be out there at night. I was slowly jogging my usual routes when I saw something that really surprised me. I could see that I wasn't alone that night. I sensed a presence up ahead. By that, I mean I could make out two vague shapes in the darkness. Those two shapes seemed to be stood right beside the irrigation canal. As I drew a couple of meters closer, I was still about twelve away. I realized those shapes in the dark belonged to other humans. Even though it was dark and there weren't any street lights at all, and I couldn't see the faces of these two people, I somehow knew instinctively they must be older. Maybe it was due to the way they were standing or something. I thought they must be a couple, the pair of them taking a late night walk together. I had seen others doing it before, so it wasn't that uncommon. It also wasn't anything to really worry about. I had no issue continuing my jog past them. I took a glancing look over to them and realized that they were doing something weird. I heard them whispering as I approached and I brought my pace down. I became curious as to what they were up to. I heard the old couple whispering, You're doing so well! Keep trying! Come on! They seemed to be happily chatting with one another as they were looking down into the canal. The odd thing was, it was pitch black down there. I ran past that canal a bunch of times, and even in the summer I could never see the water at night. Especially not on a night as dark as this. I didn't know exactly what they were doing, but it was definitely giving me a weird vibe. I sped up and ran past them. They must have heard me coming, but it didn't make them react whatsoever. I just heard them continuing to whisper into the darkness of the canal. They seemed too determined with whatever they were doing to pay any attention to me. I completed my jog that night and went home and showered. I went to sleep, but just before sleeping... I wondered and wondered what they were looking at in that dark canal. Before I knew it, I drifted off. It played on my mind over the next couple of days. I couldn't stop thinking about what those two old people could have been up to that late. I went back and decided to head out on an early morning jog instead of a late night one this time. I wanted to check out the area I saw the old people in. 
I approached through the routes I usually took and slowed down at the bend I saw that old couple. I went to the edge of the irrigation canal and peered in purely out of curiosity. I didn't expect to see what I saw there. There were six dolls in the canal, all of their limbs having been removed. The limbs were floating in the boggy water. Judging by how dirty those dolls looked, I imagine they must have been there for a long time. For whatever reason, that couple had been talking to six dolls floating in the canal in the dark. Why, I can only imagine. I have a lot more questions and needless to say, no answers. I ended up changing my nightly jogging routine, just in case I'd have to run into such a strange experience again. It was pretty damn creepy, especially experiencing all that in the dark of midnight. Maybe it doesn't sound like that to you, but it really freaked me out. This happened just a few months ago. For a little bit of background, I graduated college three years ago. I hadn't been to the library in some time. I went back this past summer. It had probably been a little over a year since the last time I had been there. I needed to go to print off a couple of documents. I was starting a new job and did not have a printer at my apartment. I went to the library that was only about five minutes away. When I got inside, things were very quiet. There were not a whole lot of people in there. I found the computer lab area relatively quickly. They had a couple of printers that you could use. The library probably had about 20 computers, and three other people were scattered about here and there. I sat down at one, not really by anyone else, and logged on. I wasn't going to be there for a very long time. I went to locate the things I needed to print out. After two minutes of being there, though, a random man sat right at the computer next to me. This was a little bit strange. There was all this open space around us with no other people nearby. It didn't really bother me too much, though. In fact, I tried to pay it no mind at all. I was focused on the task at hand and knew I would only be there for about five more minutes. After a minute or so of sitting down, the man leaned over into me and said hello. I said hi back to him. He looked to be about 20 years older than I was. So, uh, hey, you doing some kind of school project or something? I said no. I had graduated from school already and just had to print out some things for work. The guy said okay, but I could tell he was just staring at me. It seemed a little bit odd, not too big of a deal though. Finally, I was able to print off what I needed a couple of minutes later. When I heard the printer start up, I logged off the computer, then got up and walked over to the printer. I grabbed up my documents and put them in my folder. As I was doing this, I saw the man stand up from his computer as well, as if he was going to leave. I just kind of thought, well, that's weird. Not much else though. I left the library after. As I was walking out to my car, though, I noticed the man a ways behind me. This is when I felt like maybe something was up here. I was able to get to my car easily, and then I would be able to drive home when I was inside. I felt completely safe. I left the library lot and started driving home. It wouldn't take long to get back. Only a minute after pulling out of the library, though, I noticed the car behind me was the same man. I was stuck at a red light, and he pulled up right on my bumper. Because it was daytime, I was able to easily see it was him behind the wheel. I hoped that he would turn someplace else. I really thought, there's no way he's going to follow me home. But the closer I got to my apartment, the closer the guy remained driving behind me. I started to get really nervous. I wasn't sure what to do. My apartment was coming up soon. The turn for it came, and when I turned into my apartment complex, the man turned in right behind me. My apartment building is relatively big, and the parking lot is gated. You have to enter a code, and each resident has their own code. The apartment is not fancy or anything, but the security features are very nice. 
Now, I was stopped at the place where you enter the code, with the guy right on my tail. I entered it, and the gate began to open. I drove in, and the guy tried to drive in right behind me, like he was going to sneak in on my code. I drove just past the gate area, then slammed on my brakes so the man couldn't get in. I waited for the gate to close behind me. The guy didn't honk or react at all. The gate closed, leaving him stuck outside, and I started to drive forward and out of sight of the man. As I was doing so, I just so happened to see him turn around and leave. Obviously, he did not live here. I was able to get back safely, and luckily I haven't seen the guy ever since then. I still can't believe that he followed me home. Looking back, I'm really glad I did not let him into my apartment complex. Who knows what would have happened then? Sometime last year, I was holed up in my house for a whole day and night. My city had a huge storm roll through that put everyone on lockdown inside for almost an entire 24 hours. Houses and roads were flooding, and on the news there were even reports of wind damaging windows and ripping roof panels off of homes. I was alone at the time, spending the day on my phone keeping up with the news and listening to all the chaos going on outside. Around 5 or 6, the power started flickering, turning off for just a few moments, then turning back on. Maybe an hour after this had started, the power fully shut off. I waited for a few minutes, expecting it to come back on, but after a while I realized it was not going to. At least not until after the storm was over. I sat on the couch and started scrolling through the news again on my phone for any updates. All of a sudden, there was a heavy knock on my front door. It scared the hell out of me, being so loud in the midst of such a crazy storm. It was also scary because I was not expecting anyone to be outside in this weather. I mean, who would be approaching me? I stayed where I was for a minute, debating whether to even go and see who it was. The thought rolled through my mind that maybe it was a neighbor in need of help or wanting to ask if my power was out too. It was still absurd for anyone to be outside, but I went up to the door anyway and looked out the peephole. Nobody was there. Perhaps I'd waited too long to check, but when looking out, a really unnerving feeling washed over me. I went back to the living room and opened a window letting in a minimal amount of light from outside. I didn't have any way to charge my phone, and I didn't have a flashlight either. I kinda just sat there and stared out the window, looking for any signs of life. Out of the blue, I swear I could hear a voice outside. I swung my head around, looking to where I thought I'd heard it from, but of course I couldn't hear it anymore. I figured it may have just been the wind, making strange noises. I turned back around, almost right on cue though. I heard it yet again, a few quick words, like someone was talking to somebody else. I got up and went to a nearby window, looking outside. It was so dark and rainy, there was nothing really for me to see at all. Still, I stared out into the rain. A sudden flicker of lightning lit up the area for a moment, and in that split second, I made out a figure not far away from my home. I had no way to know what he was doing or really anything at all. I could just see a figure for a split second. Now that it was dark again, I couldn't see anything at all. I was getting more and more unnerved. I closed up the blinds and all the windows and decided to go upstairs to the bedroom. Despite this, I was still nervous. Why would a man be standing out in the middle of such a brutal storm? It was hard not to wonder what they were doing or who they were talking to. Hours went by with nothing further happening, just the sound of the storm outside. As I sat in the room, I began to wonder if maybe it had all been a coincidence. Just when I had started to forget all about it, a sudden sound echoed from downstairs. 
It was clearly the sound of a door opening. I could feel my face go pale as I tried to listen in. It felt like the storm had grown louder. I knew there was no way I could hear any footsteps at all. I just had to sit there in my own thoughts and wait horrified in the small barely lit bedroom. A minute passed by, and then another. I got the courage to call 911, though I knew it would be a long time for them to arrive. From the time I heard the door open to the time it took the police to finally arrive, it was over 30 minutes. There were no other sounds, and nobody ever came up to my room. All the cops found was an open front door and wet shoe prints all around the inside of my home. There were no indications of any intent after entering. It almost looked like they broke in, walked around for a while, and then just left without taking anything. There's been no answers to the events of that night. It's probably not a good idea to sleep out by the sea in your car. I can say this firsthand, as I've had a frightening experience when I tried it. My family home is on a small island, which is surrounded by the sea. Growing up, I used to ride the ferry on a near daily basis. Whenever we needed to go shopping, we needed to ride on the ferry. One afternoon, my older brother asked me if I wanted to go to a mall on the mainland with him, so we boarded up the ferry and had a great day out. We had such a good time that I guess we lost track of time altogether. We ended up missing the last ferry home. There were hotels and inns we could have stayed in, but we weren't exactly rich at the time. Plus, we'd just blown through a load of money on shopping. Out of options, we reluctantly decided to spend the night in the car at a nearby parking lot which faced the sea. We knew that the first ferry home would come in at about 6.30 a.m., so it wouldn't be that long of a time to wait. I knew I probably would not even get a wink of sleep, especially since my brother was a heavy snorer. I did manage to get at least some shut-eye in, though. After some time, I woke up in a bit of a daze, not knowing what was going on. I had such a strange and unsettling feeling. I looked around. I had a pain in my neck, which was to be expected when sleeping in a car, of course. I looked out at sea and saw a white swirling mist that seemed to be slowly approaching. Was this a bank of fog, I asked myself? I didn't think so. There weren't any rolling fog banks in the area, and as far as I knew, an isolated piece of fog didn't exist. I mean, does it? Well, I guess maybe it could have been smoke or something. Then again, I said to myself, kind of odd to see smoke out on the water, right? It was a cold night as well. I couldn't make up my mind about what exactly I was seeing. I just kept watching it. It was so mesmerizing. Before long, as I continued to watch, it seemed to slowly morph into the shape of a human being. That was when fear replaced curiosity for me. I thought I was seeing something supernatural or otherworldly in the moment. The moment that thought entered my mind, I went to shake my brother awake. I began to panic. I was unable to move, though. I couldn't even turn to face my brother. I couldn't move a single finger. I was frozen in the passenger seat. This was the first time in my life that I experienced this sort of paralysis. I've heard of sleep paralysis before, but I want to tell you that it didn't feel like I was asleep. In my experience, I'm unsure of what to call it. I knew I had to somehow wake up my brother, but I didn't know how I was going to do that. I was unable to even blink my eyes or make a sound at all. The whole time I was panicking, this misty white figure was approaching the vehicle. I was thinking of what we would do if it managed to get into the car. What could I do then? To my surprise, it stopped at the edge of the water, just stopped and then slowly faded away into the night air. As soon as it disappeared, I was released from the invisible binds I had suffered. I immediately shook my brother away and explained to him the strange sight I had just witnessed. 
I expected him not to believe me and even laugh at me, but he said he felt as if the area we parked in had a bad vibe to it. He said he had a gut feeling about it. My brother has theorized over the years that the white misty shape I had seen out by the water may have been the soul of someone who had taken their life by jumping from the nearby bridge. Some legends say that those that pass at sea can't make it back to the land, and maybe that's why I saw the figure fade away at the shoreline. Well, if that's the case, that sure is sad and spooky. My brother loves scary stories and anything to do with the occult, so he just loves sharing these paranormal tales. As for me myself, I don't know what to feel really. Maybe it really was a ghost. Or maybe I just had a bad bout of sleep paralysis. One thing's for sure though, that terrifying feeling of being unable to move as the figure approached me is something I'll never forget. In September of 2022, I got my first job as a bagger at a public supermarket. The first two months were a breeze. During the end of October, I started to notice this older white Honda Accord that would sit in the lot past closing and always leave just after I did. One night in the middle of November, I had a late break due to low staff. Since this was near winter, it got pretty dark pretty early. At this point, it was around 7.15 p.m. We do have a break room, but I prefer to go out and sit in my car for some privacy. I had just gotten dinner and started walking out of the store to my car. It was parked in the far side of the lot. As I was getting in, the same white Honda I mentioned earlier pulled into the parking spot directly beside me practically in my parking space. I don't know why, but I immediately had the gut feeling that something was going to go wrong here. I locked my doors right away. As I did so, a tall and skinny man appeared at my passenger side window, cupping his hands to look inside my car. I suddenly got a huge pit in my stomach that was telling me to run. I just froze. I didn't know what to do. I quickly told the man to leave me alone through the window where I would call the police. He stood there for a moment before replying that he simply wanted to eat dinner with me. In shock, I looked around for anyone else in the parking lot to assist me. I was a vulnerable 16-year-old girl. Nobody, not even a single soul was around. It was a complete ghost town except for this man. After a lifetime, it felt like... The man began yanking at my door's handle and banging on my windows. After failing miserably, he gave up and jumped inside his car. He pulled out and went behind the store. Even though I was terrified, I got the courage to open my door and sprint back inside the store. In sheer panic, I explained everything to my manager while one of my co-workers called the police. Our store manager pulled up the CCTV footage. As the police arrived, all I could do was sit there in horror. The video clearly showed the Honda circling the parking lot waiting for me, just minutes before I came out earlier. As I walked out, you could see the sedan follow me to my car and park right next to me. The police made a report and questioned me as well. A few days later, my dad got a call with some spine-tingling news. We found out that I had been continuously stalked for quite a while by a 20-year-old man. I didn't even know. We also figured out the man had graduated from the same school I'd been attending and that he had been stalking me through an air tag that he'd attached under my rear bumper. To this day, I still don't understand or know what his full intentions were but I'm thankful that my gut feeling was right. Unfortunately, he was only given a few citations and three days in jail. I'm just glad to be alive and safe. I no longer take my lunches at night and always have a male co-worker walk me to my car. I 
I got a job in my 20s as a storage worker in a local warehouse. It was located on the side of a highway at the end of the town next to nothing. We always joked about the location and why the owners of the company chose to build the huge warehouse in such a remote and empty area of town, out of the way of everything else. It was probably just cheap land with easy transport from the highway, but it always still felt a little odd to be pulling into the large empty parking lot in the middle of nowhere every night. I always worked overnights with one of my co-workers, who I'll keep anonymous and call him Tyler for the sake of this story. Our job was to break down and organize the shipments from the day, and then move them to their respective place in the warehouse to be stored. Once you do it for a couple of weeks, it becomes very repetitive and easy work that I can do while half asleep. Most nights, Tyler and I were the only two overnight workers. Some days, this meant I would be working all alone. This happened during Tyler's vacation week, so I was alone at the warehouse from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. every night. It was a Wednesday night this time, and right away there was something weird when I pulled in. There was a car parked in the far corner of this massive empty parking lot. Its lights were off and nobody seemed to be around. It being all the way out here on private property was very sketchy. I parked next to the entrance door and went inside, then called the cops to come down and have a look. I thought it was probably just some teenagers or a broken down car from the highway. It was on private property though, and the fact it was parked in the far corner gave me a really sketchy feeling. 20 minutes later, cops came to the front door and told me the car was empty with no signs of anybody around. They were pretty sure it was broken down too, so we got a tow truck to come down and take it away. I then went back to work. I moved several shipments, which probably took me around an hour or so. And that was when I was interrupted by a loud bang at the front of the building. I quickly walked down and turned on the front lights, then walked up to the door. A man was standing behind the glass, staring at me with his fist on the door. He looked extremely tired and exhausted. I walked closer and spoke to him through the glass. Are you okay? What are you doing here on private property? The man stared at me with a disgusted look. Where's my car? He shouted, banging on the door. I tried to explain what happened but he kept interrupting me, getting more aggressive and screaming at me to let him inside the building. I threatened to call the cops on him, finally getting him to back away a bit and give me one more crazy look before walking away altogether. As I went back to work, I couldn't stop thinking about where that man could have been all this time. I thought maybe he'd gone to a gas station to get a canister for his car or something, but there's no way he could have walked all the way there and back. If he got a ride, surely he would have been back before the car got towed. I really just couldn't think of anywhere the man could have been that would make sense. Only a few minutes into working, another bang came from the front door. I was both frustrated and scared. When I looked through the glass, I was surely not expecting to see the very same cops that were there earlier. They said they got a call from the tow company about some concerning things on the outside of the trunk. I guess nobody had noticed beforehand. They questioned me about everything I saw, and I told them about the man who'd come by looking for his car. They soon left after that, and I didn't get any real updates until later in the week. The cops came back with a search dog to search the forest around the warehouse. Supposedly, they found blood covering the entire back of the bumper, and once they got a warrant to search it, they found even more blood inside the trunk. They believe the man may have possibly come out there to bury a body in the forest near the warehouse. To my knowledge, they never found any significant evidence. The man also never went to claim his car from the tow company, and he never appeared again. He just disappeared altogether. It's really unnerving, knowing how close I was to a possible murderer. For the last couple of years working at that warehouse, I get really creeped out when working nights alone.
I know it wasn't likely, but it always would be in the back of my mind that the man might come back and try to make me pay for what I did. I was doing DoorDash late one night, trying to get some extra money for savings. It wasn't too busy, but I was getting a few orders here and there to make it worth my while. A little after 1am, an order came in for a customer 30 minutes away. It was a long drive for sure, but the payout was good enough to make me accept it. I drove down to the restaurant, some local Korean place that looked quite expensive. Then I started heading out to the house. By the end of the route, it had started taking me to a pretty bad part of town. I'd been here before with no problems, but as I drove through and looked at all the run-down houses, I started getting a bit uncomfortable. When I got to the address listed, I parked on the side of the road. It was a very small old house with a cracked and destroyed driveway. I got out of my car and started walking up to the porch with the bag. Right as I was about to set the bag down, my phone rang. After answering it and getting no response, I hung up and finished the delivery, then hurried back to my car. As I turned my car on and buckled up, I heard the front door to the house swing open. I looked over and saw a woman waving her arms in the air, running to my car and screaming at me to please wait. It was so bizarre. I was too frozen to react. She ran up to my window and started banging, begging me to help her. I had no idea what was going on. I opened the window a crack and asked what she needed. She said her three-year-old daughter was inside, struggling to breathe, and that she needed help right now. The woman started going back up the driveway and begging me to come help. Still in a confused state of shock, I got out of my car and started to follow her. As I did though, I noticed her immediately get quiet and stop panicking. Thinking calmly now that the situation was less chaotic and sudden, I realized how strange this was. Have you called 911 yet? I asked, stopping in the driveway. She turned around. Her tears and panic were immediately gone. She said there was no time, and then very obviously started to pretend to panic again. It looked more like a crackhead having a mental breakdown, not a mother worried about her child. I immediately ran back to my car. She continued screaming and even ran back down the driveway to the passenger door, trying to rip it open. I turned the car back on and reversed as she tried to run in front of it to come to my side. Once I was clear of her, I put it in drive and went around her. In the second I passed the house again, I saw a large figure standing in the upstairs window and watching the entire thing. As soon as I got out of that neighborhood, I dialed 911 and told them the address and the situation. That was when I got a call back from the police. They told me the woman had said an entirely different story, saying she only came out to give me a cash tip. They also noted that she apparently lived alone, with no record of having any kids or adults living with her. This only made me more horrified about the situation. After talking some more with the officer, it was clear that nothing could be done. There was no proof for either of our stories, and trying to press charges would be a hopeless battle. On top of this, the officer seemed tired and not in the mood to deal with anything. I knew they were right about me not being able to do much, so it was all left as that. In my guts, I know she was trying to get me inside that house for nefarious reasons especially knowing she had no kids at all. The scariest part of it after knowing everything was seeing the person inside the house watching us and knowing that he was eerily waiting for me to enter the home. I worked at a 24-7 fast food restaurant a few years back. When I was in college... The job wasn't fun or enjoyable in any way, and most of my co-workers were middle-aged people with no personalities. 
I was doing school online, which meant I had more time to work, so I was cranking out 40 hours a week at least, and even got a promotion to shift lead after a few months. What I didn't realize when I took the promotion was that I was signing up to be officially a full-time employee. That meant they could make me work any shift. Not even a week into it, they put me as overnight, and I couldn't even argue. Overnights were a pain in the ass, because I'd be the only one there. If the drive through got backed up, then I'd be hustling non-stop without any breaks at all. On the flip side though, sometimes it would be completely dead, and I'd just be standing around all night on my phone. This was one of those nights. I was in the back of the kitchen, sitting on a pile of boxes and scrolling through my phone, just trying to pass the time away. That was when my headset rang, to alert me a customer was in the drive through I got up and went to the computer, then asked what they would like to order. Nobody said anything, so I turned and looked up at the drive through camera. The lane was empty, no cars were in the drive through or even in the parking lot around the restaurant. The system never falsely beeps like that. There was a slight storm outside though, so maybe a raindrop or a flash of light had tripped the sensor somehow. I stayed by the drive through window for a few minutes, and my headset beeped again. This time, I quickly looked up at the cameras and caught a man walking past the drive through lane. He was wearing a thick hoodie and a face covering as well. He quickly walked out of the camera's view. Where the restaurant was, there wasn't anywhere else he could have parked or walked from unless he was walking on the side of the main road. I watched the cameras to see if he'd come back, but after 10 minutes of no activity, I went back to my phone. 15 more minutes went by before I got another beep. When I checked the cameras, the same man was there. This time, he was just standing in the drive through lane. Uh, excuse me, sir, can I help you? After a moment, he started reciting an order for a small meal. I wasn't supposed to serve people in the drive through unless they were in a vehicle, so I told him I couldn't accept his order. He stood there, letting the rain soak him as he looked at the screen and didn't speak. I thought about telling him to leave, but I didn't want to escalate things if I didn't have to. I just waited. After a minute, he started walking down the drive through lane, toward the side of the restaurant where the window was. I rushed over and latched the window shut. Not even a second later, the man appeared outside. He had his hood and mask still on. He looked to be in his late forties, with a dead look in his eyes. He watched me through the window and stood outside like he was waiting for me to talk to him. And there was something about his look that really freaked me out and kept me from speaking. Then he softly said, Open up. I nervously said no and stayed where I was. The man continued looking at me, then knocked on the window. After a few seconds, he turned and walked away. As he did so, a loud scraping sound ran along the side of the building. I checked the cameras to make sure he left, and luckily he did not come back. During the next hour of my shift, though, I was thinking about that scraping sound. I decided to take the trash to the dumpster and take a quick look on the side of the wall under the drive through window. There was a long scratch looking like it was made by a knife dragging along the side of the building. I called the police after that, but the man couldn't be identified from the grainy camera footage mixed with the heavy rain and fog. The man never turned up again. I'll never know exactly what he was planning on doing that night, but seeing as he had a knife ready in hand, I assumed that had I taken his order and opened that window, that would have been the last thing I would have ever done. I used to work at a grocery store. The store was called Cub Foods, and I worked there for about six months or so. I was mostly a cashier there, but I also sometimes did other things. The store was pretty large, and had just about every kind of grocery item you could want. 
We also had a very large parking lot that had a big wooded area right up against the back side. One time, I was working until about 10 o'clock at night. Things had gone by fairly smoothly so far. I was working as a cashier for the entire time. I helped out more customers than I could count, really. I was kept pretty busy until about 8 o'clock at night. From then on, things kind of dragged on. The final hours were always slow when I worked these later shifts. Finally, 10 p.m. arrived. I was done and clocked out, then left the store and headed for my car. I was parked at the very back corner of the lot, right up against the woods. My boss told all of us employees to park toward the back of the parking lot so customers could have the closest spaces. I walked out to my car in the dark and quiet parking lot, and as I approached my vehicle, I heard some noises coming out of the dense woods. I tried to look, but I couldn't really see anything. It was very, very dark out there, and the noises sounded like they were coming from a ways back inside of it. I figured it was probably just an animal of some kind. As I continued to look, the noises stopped altogether just a few seconds later. I unlocked my car and went inside, then went on my phone. After a long day of work, it was very common for me to get on my phone for several minutes before driving away. I would use that time to catch up on the texts I'd missed, or respond to any Snapchats I'd gotten in the meantime, then head home. It was about a minute after I sat down. I was still inside of my car scrolling through my phone, when suddenly I heard another noise. It sounded like someone walking outside, right next to my vehicle. I looked over, and my front passenger side door suddenly opened up. A random guy was standing there. When I saw him, I was shocked. He was somewhat short, wearing a jacket with the hood all the way up. I couldn't get a good look at his face because of how dark it was. Everything happened so quickly after that. The man told me to turn my car off, and I sat there not knowing what to do. I remember he told me again, this time much louder and more commanding. I didn't do it. Instead, I slapped the car into reverse and slammed on the gas. The car jerked back and out of the parking space. As it did, the man started to run after me. When I stopped the car to put it into drive, the man just about caught up to me. The passenger side door was still wide open. I changed to drive and sped away just as the man grabbed the door's handle. I got out of the parking lot as fast as I could, with the handle being ripped out of his hand. When I was back on the road, I called my boss and told her about what just happened in the parking lot. She called the police, but the man was long gone by the time they arrived. The next time I went into work, she asked me some questions about the incident. I filled out a form, and I'm glad that I got away from that guy. I truly believe that he was the noise I heard inside of those woods. He must have been hiding out there, waiting for someone to come. I'm not sure what exactly he was planning to do. We do have security cameras, but unfortunately didn't have any in that part of the parking lot. My best guess is the guy was going to try to rob me, or steal my car. I'm glad he didn't, though. This is something that happened a few years ago, when I went to Safeway. It was nighttime. I don't exactly remember the exact time, but it was a little bit later. I stopped there to grab a few things. After parking my car, I went to walk inside the store. There was a man standing a few feet away from the entrance door. He was wearing a heavy winter jacket and a winter hat as well. When I passed him by, he asked me if I had a cigarette. I told him I did not, and kept on walking. At the time, I didn't really think much of that interaction. I entered the store and saw things were very quiet inside. There were not very many other people in there at this time. 
I went directly to what I needed. I didn't even have to get a cart or a basket. I only spent about five minutes shopping and then headed back to the front. There, I paid for my items and then went to leave. I walked to the exit, and as I was about to leave the store, I saw the man again. I was in the little area of the grocery store before you exit, the part where there's always the vending machines and things like that. The man was just sort of loitering around in that area. When I passed him by, he asked me once more if I had a cigarette. I guess he had forgotten that I'd already talked to him just five minutes ago. I told him I didn't have any on me and said I could not offer him one. He then asked me if he could borrow five bucks. I said sorry, but I was in a hurry. I kept walking, but as soon as I made it out the door, the man left right after I did. I figured he was just walking back, around to the spot that he had been at before. The farther I walked through the lot, though, the more I could still hear him following me. I soon got all the way to my car, and the man was only about 15 feet behind me. I stood outside my vehicle and turned around to face the man. He stopped in place and just stood there facing me. There were no other cars nearby that he might be going to. Clearly, he was following me for some reason. Hey, can I help you? The man immediately said, Yes, give me all your money. I chuckled, not thinking he was serious, but he didn't laugh at all. I asked him if he was being serious, and he nodded his head without smiling or anything. I started to get very nervous. At that point, I unlocked my car and tried to get inside as fast as I could. As soon as I started to move, though, the man immediately began sprinting toward me. I slammed my door shut and locked it. I started my engine. By the time the man reached me, he tried to open my door and then began whacking at my window. I was able to start driving away and left the parking lot as quickly as I possibly could. The man was just left standing there. When I made it out, I called the police and told them what happened. I felt lucky to be able to make it away from that guy. After that experience, I was nervous to go shopping by myself for a while. I still rarely go at night when I do, and I always try to park in a well-lit area or as close as I can to the store. For some background of the story, I'm a woman and 26 years old. I live by myself and have an apartment a ways outside of the city. There's a grocery store that's pretty close to my place that I go to quite a lot, probably about once a week on average. One time, I went grocery shopping at night. I got there at around 8.30 p.m., and the store was obviously not very busy. I grabbed up a card and started in the produce section. I slowly made my way throughout the aisles. Pretty soon, I had quite a few items stocked up. I was in one of the center aisles when a man started to approach me. I wasn't exactly sure where he had come from, but there were a number of other shoppers around. He stopped next to me and pointed to something in my cart. It was a box of frosted mini-wheat cereal, I believe. He asked me where I got it. The man said he was looking all over for it. This guy was about six feet tall, fairly thin with long blonde hair. I told him it was in the middle of the cereal aisle, about two aisles back. He asked me if I could show him specifically and said he was really bad with directions. I didn't mind helping him out, so I said okay. He followed me as I walked out of the aisle and over to the cereal section. They were about halfway down one of the higher shelves. I'm not really sure how he missed it at all. When he saw them, he laughed and said, Man, I'm so stupid. How did I not see that? I remember then the guy took one off the shelf and put it into my cart, then took my box. He jokingly said, Let's trade, huh? It was slightly strange, but I didn't really mind. I told him I'd better get back to my own thing. He seemed a bit disappointed, but then said okay. I left and returned to what I'd been doing. 
I finished up all my shopping, which didn't really take too much longer. I didn't see the guy for the rest of the time I was in the store. After I checked out, I left and drove home. Everything seemed pretty normal. Later on that night, as I was about to go to sleep though, I suddenly heard the doorknob to my apartment begin turning. Thankfully, I always locked the door, but I didn't know why anybody would be at the front door of my apartment this late at night trying to enter my place. I walked over and looked out the peephole. When I did, the same guy from the store was outside. Needless to say, I was really surprised. He was just kind of looking around nervously. I then watched him slowly walk out of sight down the hallway. I remained watching out of the peephole for the next few minutes. It didn't look like he was going to return. I wondered how and why he was even there. I felt like I would have noticed if he had followed me home. Maybe it was possible though. I stayed up much later than I wanted to because of this event. I didn't really know what to do. I considered calling the police, and maybe I should have, but the man didn't return for the rest of the night. I figured that whatever it was he wanted to do, he had probably given up by now. At 2 o'clock in the morning, I was finally able to fall asleep. The next morning I got up. I didn't have to work that day. It was at that time that I got a call on my cell phone. I picked it up and answered right away. Looking back, I'm not exactly sure why. I didn't recognize the number at all, and normally when I don't know the number, I refuse to answer the phone. When I did, I heard a voice on the other end that sounded very familiar. When I asked who it was that was calling me, the man said, Remember me? From the grocery store last night? I couldn't believe it. Somehow he had my number. I immediately hung up on him, not knowing what else to do. I blocked his number, and after that I went straight to the police. I told them everything about my encounter with the man, and about how he tried to enter my apartment the previous night. I gave them his number from my phone after I blocked it, and the police were able to locate the man and let me know that they talked to him. They told him not to bother me again, and ever since that happened, I haven't heard from him at all. Honestly, I'm hoping I never do. I'm an old man, but this happened when I was much younger. I wanted to share this story just in case it helped someone else. I drove out to a remote tourist location one night and parked in its parking lot. I was all alone and didn't have much going on that night. I think it was about 8 p.m. or so. I started to get a little bit drowsy and ended up falling asleep in my car. I don't know how long I'd been asleep for, but eventually I was woken up by the sound of a tapping at my window. My neck was very stiff, so I did my best to turn my head to the direction the tapping was coming from. I was surprised to see a woman standing outside. She was desperately tapping on my window. The girl was pretty young, and she was all alone as well. I was really confused since I was somewhat groggy after waking up. She was trying to speak to me, but I couldn't really hear her very well. I rolled down the window a little to see what was going on. In a frantic and desperate voice, she pleaded with me to help her and hurry up and open the door. She said that she was being chased by a man and he could arrive at any moment. I was sure that this was a real situation, having just woken up. I even wondered if for the briefest of moments this could be a ghost or something. That thought vanished as I woke up further. As this was happening, I hurriedly went and unlocked the door and was just about to open it to help her in. For some reason though, I began to hesitate. Something felt off about this whole situation. It was more than a little strange. For instance, her hair, makeup, and clothes were in perfect order. There wasn't a single strand out of place on her head, and none of her makeup was running at all. If you were being chased and sweating a bunch and crying, you would expect that you would be a little more in disorder, right? 
As I looked a bit closer for a moment, she was good at acting frantic and frightened to an extent, but it seemed very forced now that I was more awake. It's hard to explain, but it's like she was following a script, like she knew what she was going to say before she said it. A bit of an act, if you might say. I looked around from inside my vehicle and didn't see anyone else in the vicinity. There were no other cars in the parking lot either. I felt somewhat scared at that point. A part of me really did want to help, because if it was me in her shoes or any of my family members, I would want to count on the kindness of a stranger, but now I just wasn't buying her story. I decided to start my engine just in case. I figured I could turn on my headlights and illuminate some of this dark area and see if there was any truth to her claims. I didn't see anything in front of my car, but as I went to adjust my rear view mirror, something immediately caught my eye. I could make out several dark figures, all male by the look of them. They were all crouched behind my car like they were runners at the starting block. I saw the woman quickly glance back to them, and once she realized I had seen them, I stepped on the gas. I floored it and got out of that car park. It was pretty difficult to drive initially because I had adjusted my seat to sleep earlier. When I was far enough away from the car park, I checked the time. It was sometime just after 2 a.m. I remember thinking those men must have been trying to hide in my blind spot. They knew exactly what they were doing. If I had unlocked the door, I think at the very least I would have been robbed, but something even worse probably would have happened to me. I don't know for sure though. That night taught me to park in places that are well lit and close to surveillance cameras. I tend to park in the center of lots these days. From that day forth, I no longer slept in my car in sketchy areas like that parking lot again. If I ever have to sleep in my car, I always do it somewhere where there's lots of lights, restrooms, vending machines, cameras, you know, just in case. The one massive plus I take away from that night is knowing the fact that the woman didn't actually need my help. She wasn't being chased or attacked by any man, so I don't feel bad for leaving. I hate her for being so devious, but I'm glad that no one was actually in any danger except for me. I suppose the lesson is to please be careful out there. This was almost five years ago from today. At the time, I was living in a small one-bedroom apartment when my parents bought a new house about an hour away from the city I lived in. It was a really nice place, too. Big countryside home with a ton of land. But due to their work schedules and just how complicated moving long distance was, they had to ship all of their stuff and the movers would drop it off about a week before they would get there. To help out, I offered to house sit during that in-between time and make sure the move was all good. I got to the house on Saturday morning. I greeted the movers and let them haul everything inside. They finished by sundown, and all the stuff was piled in the corner of the rooms. Really, the only thing was the couch set up for me to chill on. Seeing the house with everything inside, though, really put into perspective how large the place was. I mean, to me at least, it felt like a huge mansion. Wide open rooms, long empty hallways, without anything set up, it was honestly kind of unsettling. After eating some leftover dinner I brought with me, I decided to check out the backyard as well. It had a large patio, with a fire pit built in, and a bunch of random outdoor furniture scattered along the side of the house. I grabbed a small lawn chair and put it by the fire pit, then sat back and relaxed. The night was a little bit breezy, especially way out in the middle of the open fields, but it was so quiet and peaceful. It was probably around 11 p.m. or so. I had been out there for at least an hour, when out of nowhere... A man suddenly appeared in the distance. 
He was walking way out in the field. I looked to where he appeared to have come from and saw nothing but open land. I looked toward where he was heading and saw the same thing as well. I watched the man walk all the way down until the fog covered him up. The whole time, I had no clue what he was doing out there. Several minutes went by as I looked out into the fog, still thinking about this random man. When he emerged from the dark this time, he was walking back the way he had come before. He was slightly closer this time, though. It was close enough to where it was getting a little bit uncomfortable. I ended up going back inside, not wanting to be spotted by the man. I stayed in for an hour, mostly scrolling through my phone, but also checking the windows multiple times. Thankfully, I had not seen anything of concern. At around 12.30 a.m., I grabbed a blanket from one of the boxes and tossed it on the couch. I laid down and fell asleep in the living room. When I was woken up later in the night, something immediately felt off. I was confused and uneasy. Opening my eyes and trying to figure out what had woken me up, I felt like the whole house was so dark and silent, and the shadows of random stacked up boxes made it difficult to see. Only a moment after looking around, a bright glare shined into the room. I squinted from the brightness as the light moved around, then suddenly shifted away. Opening my eyes again, I saw another small glare moving outside the front window. It shifted again, coming through the window and lighting up the whole living room. It shined directly into my eyes. By the time they adjusted, the light was gone and the window had nothing behind it. I got up and picked up my phone. I went up to the window and tried to see who was out there. They seemed to have been gone, having turned off their light and faded out into the foggy night. I don't know who exactly was out there or what they wanted. What I'd say my best guess is, is that they had seen the movers and were trying to rob the place. Whatever the truth is though, I think I got lucky, because if I hadn't woken up from that light, it's likely I would have had to find out what their intentions were the hard way. It was just a regular Friday night after getting out of a long closing shift at work. I made a quick microwave meal then hopped online to start gaming with some of my buddies. I had an energy drink and some snacks and was ready to stay up late and enjoy the night. We gamed for a while. I never even checked the time really. At some point there was a sudden knock at my door at first, I just told my friends to hold on as I took my headset off and stood up. When I turned around from my desk, though, I realized how dark it was inside and outside. The only light was the light from my computer. I stood there, understanding how completely out of the norm it was for someone to be at my door this late into the night. That's when I looked over and saw a man peeking in through the window at me. I froze when I saw him, feeling my stomach drop out of the eeriness of him staring through my window. To my surprise, the man actually yelled at me through the glass, asking me some sort of question. I was too out of it to understand what he said, though. I walked closer to the window, and the man repeated himself, asking me if I was someone he knew named Jake or Jack or something. That definitely wasn't me. I shook my head no, and the man said nothing as he walked away and disappeared past my front yard. Obviously, I was a bit shaken by these events. I immediately shut the blinds, then went back to my computer and told my friends what just happened. They all didn't even believe me at first, but I think they heard the shakiness in my voice. They started asking a lot of questions, which only made me even more creeped out. I took their advice, going around and making sure all the doors were locked, and also locking all the windows, which I'd never even bothered to do before then. 
They assured me that everything was okay, and we went back to what we were doing. A couple of hours passed by, and honestly, I'd completely forgotten about what happened earlier. I think I assumed that if they were going to do something, it would have been right after they'd shown up. Once again, a loud knock from behind me almost knocked me off my chair in shock. This time, it was definitely from the front door. I told my friends, whispering into the headset, they told me to call the police and check who it was. Doing as they said, I quietly crept over to the door and looked out onto the porch. It was the same man again, standing there and waiting for me to answer. I watched for a minute. Oddly enough, he kept looking off to his right, as if he were looking at something or someone. I backed away and grabbed my phone. I called the police and whispered to them what was going on. Another knock came as I made my way back to the door and looked out, seeing the man looking off to the side again. He made a small gesture with his hand before knocking one more time. The night was quiet enough for me to make out someone else's footsteps moving around to the side of my home. I followed the sound with my eyes until it stopped right under one of the windows. I saw the glass shift up slightly before getting stuck on the lock and falling back down. They tried again, but the window didn't give in. After this, there was a whole minute that went by where I didn't hear anything. I just stood there and listened to the operator, updating me on the arrival of the officers. As I stared out the window, a dull sound came from outside, like something big being wedged into the wood. I could see the entire frame around the glass moving as I backed away and tried to think of what to do. Suddenly, a set of footsteps ran from the front door to the side window, followed by both of them running away. Only a moment later, I saw the flashing red and blue lights coming through the windows. As for what happened afterward, there wasn't really much. The police had nothing to really go off of. I gave them a detailed description of one of the men, but that just wasn't enough. It's been over a year since that night, and there's been no signs of them having come back, so I guess at least that's a plus. I used to work at a library not too far from where I lived. I worked there for a total of two years. The library that I worked at closed pretty late for a library. They were open from 9am to 8pm, from Monday to Thursday. The rest of the week we closed earlier at 5 o'clock. I mostly just worked on weekdays though, and often times in the evening. One night, I was working a Thursday until closing. Things would usually be very quiet for the last several hours. During that time, we would only have one employee working, which, of course, was me. The library was a little bit on the smaller side. It was just one level, and had just about everything you would want in a library still. On this night, it was very quiet like usual. I was by myself starting at 5 p.m. for the final three hours. During the 5 o'clock hour, a few people were there, but by 6 o'clock it was completely empty other than me. At least, that's what I'd thought at first. There was only one entrance and exit to the library, so it was very easy to tell when people would come and go. I was sitting behind my desk where you could check out books. From where I was, I could see a large area of the library, but not all of it. It was now dark outside and completely silent. That was always a little bit of a strange experience. At about 6.30, I was just sitting there when I began to hear a noise, what sounded like somebody walking through an aisle. There were obviously lots of bookshelves, so I couldn't see into most of the aisles. For a split second, I saw a man appear, walking from behind one bookshelf and behind another. He was tall, thin, wearing all black clothing. The most notable thing, though, was that he was wearing a strange alien mask. It was green and really creepy looking. 
I hadn't seen this guy before, so he must have put on his mask when he was already inside. I wasn't really quite sure what he was doing. Maybe some kind of prank or something? Nobody else seemed to be here, though. After he went behind another bookshelf, everything went silent again. He had been sort of far away from me. There was a little lounge area between where I was and the bookshelves. About ten minutes went by. Then, just for a second, I saw him appear again. This time, he came out of an aisle a ways away from where he was before. It was sort of creepy, seeing him pop up here and there. I thought about saying something to the man, but I didn't. For the next hour, I didn't see or hear from him at all. I was starting to worry, because we would be closing very shortly. I did not want to have to kick this guy out all by myself. I made the announcement over the library speakers that we'd be closing in 30 minutes. The guy didn't appear, though. All I heard was silence. About five minutes after that, I could see through a bookshelf that the man had pulled out a book and was staring through at me. I smiled, thinking it was a joke, perhaps. When I saw he didn't move or react, though, I began to become uncomfortable. I looked away. A minute later, I looked back, and he was still there peeking through at me. This was really weird. I looked away again and focused on my computer screen for the next several minutes. The next time I looked over, he was gone. I gave the 15-minute warning that we would be closing soon. The man in the alien mask was the only person in the entire library beside me. I didn't see him for the rest of the time until we closed. I gave multiple more warnings on the speakers, and it was now 8 o'clock. Just me and him inside. I really had no idea as to where he could be. I scanned my eyes around everything I could see, but I saw no trace of him. I hadn't heard anything either. It was so quiet in there that you could hear a pin dropping. I decided I needed to go find this guy and tell him we were now closed. I got up, and I'll admit, I was very nervous. I started at the front and made my way toward the back, going through every single aisle. Not long after starting, I heard a noise coming from the back section. I started walking in the direction I'd heard it from, but I still couldn't see the man. I called out asking if anybody was there and said we were now closed. I got nothing in response. As I looked from one shelf to another, I soon found myself toward the back of the library. I really had no idea where this guy could have gone. All of a sudden, I heard a book fall from a shelf closer to the front. It was a ways away. I moved over there, but I didn't see the man. I picked up the book and continued searching the library, covering every inch of the place. I even looked in the bathrooms and areas that were off limits to the public. I couldn't find him anywhere. I didn't hear any more noises either. Either he must have left, or this guy was getting really good at avoiding me. After staying long past what I planned to, I finally left for the night. I don't really know what the man was doing, but he really creeped me out. He literally stayed at the library for at least three hours, most of which he was the only person in there other than me. That was my creepiest experience working there. This happened in the midst of a cold winter. I fell asleep early one night. Our family home was nice and warm because the heating was on. Everyone else in my family had gone upstairs to bed, but I stayed downstairs. It was so warm underneath the katsu that I couldn't help it. It was one of those nights where you never meant to fall asleep early, but you ended up doing so anyway. Maybe you were more tired than you realized. The problem is, when you fall asleep in any place other than your bed, you're bound to wake up during the night, and that's exactly what happened to me. I think it was about 1am or so. When I woke up, it was pitch black, and I couldn't see the time well. Ah oh man, I gotta get up early in the morning, was my very first thought. 
and the usual thoughts of needing to drink some water, needing to go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, wash my face, they all came. As I was about to get myself to my feet, I heard a strange sound. It sounded almost like a cat's meow. What the hell? Was I having some sort of nightmare? I didn't own a cat, but I was hearing one. I guess that it could have been some street cats making a racket outside, you know, doing their thing. At least, that's what it seemed like to me. I decided to get up and go in search of the direction of this sound. As I got closer, it did sound like it was coming from outside, but it sounded like it was coming from directly outside. I separated my curtains and looked out into the dark night. I could see a large shadow. Even though it was entirely devoid of color, it looked humanoid. It was looming over me. If it wasn't for the glass door that separated us, I would be almost eye to eye with whatever this was. It wasn't a cat making that noise, that's for sure. Whatever this person or shadow was, it was either mimicking a cat cry or making the weirdest sounding moaning I'd ever heard. Fear didn't come to mind at first. It was more pure shock. I don't really know the best way to phrase how I was feeling. Whatever this was continued to make strange cat-like moanings. You know, the one where they sense a predator or they feel as if they're in danger. That low sound. This towering, shadowy figure kept making that noise, despite the fact I'd already discovered it. The noise it made was so weird, I backed away from the window and turned off the lights to see if I was just imagining things or having a dream or something. Was there really something out there? Once all the lights were out in my house, I knew that whoever was out there wouldn't be able to see me anymore, specifically with how dark it was inside. I watched that shadow out there, a knife in my hand, for ten minutes straight. It didn't move or react to anything. It just stood in the spot, unwavering like a statue. I had some time to think to myself about what I was seeing. If there was a person out there... There were a few things to consider. I wondered if it was a pervert, or someone who might have some learning issues who'd wandered onto my property. At the same time, I really didn't know if I was still dreaming or what was going on. At the very least, whatever was outside wasn't trying to get in or anything. It just kept making this vague cat-like cry for some unknown reason. During the ten minutes that I was just staring at this thing... I was still trying to figure out if it was even really there or not. I remember just standing there by the back door in the kitchen, watching this strange event occur. Before I knew it, I started getting drowsy again. The sound that it was making slowly started seeming less annoying, and my thoughts slowed down. I can't remember much of what happened after that. I must have fallen asleep. A few moments before I did so... I remember fighting the urge to pass out, but I lost that battle. I woke up later in the morning back on the sofa. As soon as I was conscious, I looked toward the spot where the shadowy figure had been the night before. There was nothing there. I went to look outside. It hadn't rained the night before, but there were no footprints out there or anything to indicate a presence of any kind. I asked my family if they experienced anything or heard anything that night, but they said they hadn't. If they did, I'm sure I would have heard all about it. I remember nodding in agreeance with my wife when she said I must have just had a bad dream. I agreed at the time, but I don't really agree now. I don't think it was a dream at all. I think either a person, or something more supernatural, definitely came to our house that night. I just can't explain what it was. Anytime I hear a cat do that low guttural meow sound, I think back to that night and that strange figure. It was a typical Friday after my college classes were out and I was spending the night doing DoorDash. This was my regular routine. 
dashing on the weekends to help me pay for all my living expenses while on campus. The night started well enough, getting a lot of orders done and making a good amount of money. It hit a stalemate after the big dinner rush though. Very few orders were showing up, and the ones that did were very low paying, basically waste of time orders. After an hour of aimlessly driving around, another order came through. It wasn't too bad. It was eight miles away, but the payment was well worth it. It was nothing absurd, but enough to make it not a rip-off like a lot of the other ones were. I accepted the order and ran into the restaurant to grab the bag. Then I hopped in my car and started driving. The map said it would take 30 minutes, which I think was the longest of any orders I'd done up until this point. Most of the houses were right around campus, because any further than 15 to 20 minutes out, it pretty much became just bare fields of grass. As I got to that 20 minute mark, it became just that. Very few houses at all, mostly sitting far out in fields of crops and nothing else. The rest of the 10 minute drive was on this empty road, going through all this farmland. I made it to the house. There was a dirt driveway connecting to the road, leading to a large field. In the far back was a very small house. Driving through the field felt very eerie. Even though I'm not one to get nervous without reason, this felt different somehow. As I got further out from the road, the only sound was the low rumbling of my car on the dirt. I parked out front to get the bag ready, then left the car on as I stepped out into the night. It was quiet, and the house was completely dark, having only the porch light on to illuminate the outside area. I walked through the unkempt grass and up to the porch, knocking on the door. As I waited, I looked back at my car sitting in the dark, with the field of pitch black behind it. A moment went by and I knocked again, but there was no response, not even the sound of anyone inside. It didn't take long for me to realize the strangeness of this situation. Seeing no lights on in the windows, I noticed how decayed the house looked up close. The only thing that made me think it wouldn't be abandoned was that I had an order for this address, and the porch light just so happened to be on. I looked at the light, wondering why that would be the only light on in this area. By some odd chance, I happened to recognize the top portion of the casing having a cheap solar battery. It was an automatic light that charged during the day and turned on in the evening. That meant nobody even had to be here to turn it on. Just as I was piecing this all together, I heard a rumbling sound behind me. I turned and saw a car driving down the dirt path, coming up right behind my vehicle. I stood there and stared at their headlights until a man stepped out. I yelled from the porch asking if this was his order, but he didn't reply. He just stood next to his car and didn't move or speak at all. I felt my adrenaline spike as I began realizing how horrible this situation likely was. The silence of the night only reminded me there was nobody there to help me. I was stuck in the middle of a field, between an empty house and a stranger. In a split-second instinctual reaction, I dropped the bag and sprinted off the porch, running behind the house and straight into the field of grass. I looked back, to see the man quickly gaining behind me. Frantically, I continued to run. The further out I got, the thicker and taller the grass became, until it was covering all of the views from every direction. By then, I knew the guy had no chance in following me. I slowed down, catching my breath as I carefully weaved through the crops and tried to be quiet in case the man still tried to find me. Eventually, I made it to someone else's yard, and from there I got to a road. When I had enough signal, I called the police for help. They picked me up and went to check on my car as well. Of course, the man was gone. I was extremely surprised, though, 
because my car hadn't been looted at all, and the bag of food was still on the porch of the abandoned home. That could only mean the man had other intentions, likely far worse than just robbing me. I was delivering a truckload to a company on the far west coast, coming from the east coast. The route across the country is one I've taken many times before, being a truck driver for almost 20 years. It's always the same every time I make one of these drives. Same road, same truck stop, same everything. Over these 20 years, though, I've never really had anything crazy happen. I've had a few odd scenarios, but they never really amounted to anything. So, as I was driving this route yet again, I had no worries in my mind. It was just another day on the job for me. About 20 hours into the route, though, a storm started coming over and slowing down my driving quite a bit. It was late, too, so by then I was already looking for the next truck stop to sleep at. As I drove, a very sudden light appeared behind me. The road I was on was flat and straight, so I would have seen them coming in my mirror. It was all of a sudden, though, that they appeared right behind me. Maybe they had just turned on their lights or something. I didn't know. They very quickly came right up to the back. I kept my eyes on them, until they got so close they were completely covered by the trailer. All I could see was their headlights reflecting off the back. Then their lights shut off. I maintained my speed and kept looking at my mirrors, trying to see if they were still behind me. I had no way to know. For someone to turn off their lights in the middle of a heavy storm like this was insane, and to be tailing behind me so close was just as crazy. Thankfully, a sign showed a truck stop, which was only five miles ahead. At least I knew I was close to getting away from whatever this was. I didn't want to jump to conclusions based on just some weird behavior, but as a trucker, it's hard not to think about the possibility of it being an attempted robbery, especially when alone on the road at night. For the rest of the five miles, I saw no signs of them behind me. I was still on edge though, because I really couldn't see anything anyway. I started feeling less worried as I approached the truck stop. I pulled in, trying to check my mirrors to see if they'd followed. With the rain and lack of lighting though, it was really too hard to tell. The truck stop was mostly empty, aside from a few trucks at the gas pumps. I pulled off to the side and parked in the middle of the lot. After waiting a minute and getting my things organized, I opened the truck door and leaned my head out, looking along the side of the trailer. I was drenched from the pouring rain, and only a matter of moments. From what I could tell, though, there was no vehicle behind me. I closed the door and finally felt a bit of relief. I grabbed my pillow and blanket from the passenger side, locked the doors, and turned off the truck. I tried to get some shut-eye. The rain was pounding on the metal roof, which made it easy to fall asleep, blocking out any possible sounds coming from other trucks pulling in and out. When I woke up, though, I felt like I had only been asleep for a few minutes now. I looked around, seeing it was still dark out, and the storm was the same if not worse than before. I tried to check my mirrors, but a loud thump shook the truck. My eyes opened wider, and I reached for the door handle. I opened it, looking out at the back of the trailer through the rain. I could barely see the outline of a car with its headlights off. Two men were moving around in front of it. Terrified, I hesitated to step out and confront them. As I sat there in that moment of hesitation, the door suddenly slammed against my body, shoving me back into the driver's seat. Another man stood outside, yelling at me to stay where I was. He slammed the door again. His right hand was shoved in his hoodie, with two other men behind the truck. I was in no position to try anything. I could feel the truck shaking 
as I sat in place with the man outside my door, watching my every move. He didn't look away for even a second. This went on for a few minutes. Then they ran back to their car and drove off. I was still in shock, watching their car disappear onto the road. I called the police and put in a report, but no information ever came up on who the men were. All I know is that if I had been any less aware and had just tried to drive off at first sight of the men, I probably wouldn't have been able to make it out as safely as I did. This happened several months ago. I went to a movie with my best friend Caroline, and we went on a pretty quiet night. The movie that we were seeing had been out for a little while, so there were not that many other people there. We got there while the previews were still going on, and there were quite a few seats available. There were maybe ten other people inside at most. We sat down kind of towards the back, a little bit toward the right side. We were pretty far away from everyone else. We were pretty far away from everybody else. After the second preview, Caroline said she had to use the restroom and got up. She was hoping to be back by the time the movie started. I stayed there in my seat and kept watching the previews. Not long after Caroline had left though, a random man walked up to me. I'm not really sure where he'd even come from. I was focusing on the screen, so he may have just entered the theater, or maybe he had already been in there somewhere. I didn't really know. All I know is he walked right for me and said hello. Then he sat down in Caroline's seat. I didn't know who this guy was. He was sort of tall and looked older than me. When he sat down, I told him the seat was already taken. He looked at me and said that he had purchased it. In this movie theater, you had to buy the exact seat, and you couldn't just sit wherever you wanted to. I took out my phone and showed him that I had bought both my seat and the one next to me that he was now sitting in. I was pretty sure the man knew this wasn't his seat already. When I showed it to him, he obviously acted all confused. He did the whole, oh, I guess I misread the seating chart thing. I told him my friend would be back in a minute, so he would have to go to his actual seat now. The man said he would sit there and keep me company until she returned. He was kind of creeping me out a little bit, and I really didn't like this. I told him I didn't think my friend would like that either. He ignored me and started bombarding me with questions, asking me if I lived around there. I wasn't really interested in being interrogated during a movie, so I gave him the most basic response, saying, eh, sort of. Thankfully, just then, I saw Caroline walking up the aisle, over to us. As she got closer, I could see the confused look on her face. I told the guy this was my friend, and pointed at Caroline. The man did not get up and move, though. She walked over and asked the man what was going on. This is when he finally stood up and said goodbye to me. Caroline and I watched him go down the aisle to the other side, where he then sat down on the very end. She asked me who that guy was and why he was sitting next to me, and I told her everything that happened. We whispered to each other a little bit about the strangeness. I could see the man was now just staring at us. The theater was pretty dark though, so it wasn't exactly clear what he was doing. I tried my best to just forget about it and enjoy the movie. Soon enough, it started, and things were going well for the most part. The movie was pretty long, and once I really got into it, I ended up forgetting all about the man. An hour or something into the movie, it was getting to a kind of slow part. I really had to use the restroom, so I got up without giving it much thought and walked to the aisle and down the stairs. As I was doing this, I saw movement out of the corner of my eye. I didn't even realize it was the same man from earlier. When I got out of the theater and was in the hallway, I started walking over to the restroom. I saw the man leave the theater after me. I got a bad feeling about this. I walked to the restroom and went inside. When I left, I saw the man standing around kind of outside the hallway, in the area where you can buy all the food and stuff. 
I hurried back into the theater and my seat. Not long after making it back, the man entered again. He walked right past us over to his seat. I was kind of worried about this guy's strange behavior, but I just tried to forget about things again. The movie went on for a while longer, and then ended. When it did, Caroline and I left the theater pretty quickly. We walked back out into the hallway, and then the lobby. It was then that I looked back behind us to see where the man was. A decent number of other people were around now. I could see him making his way towards us, a little farther back. We hurried out of the theater and into the parking lot. We just about ran for my car and jumped inside. When we did, Caroline saw the man. I looked over to see him running towards a car, then starting it and getting inside. After leaving the theater, I turned as soon as possible and went on to the highway. I wasn't sure if the man had intentions to follow us any further or not, but I wanted to be safe just in case. Luckily, we lost him, and he was not able to find where we went. Both of us made it back, and have not seen the guy since that night. I've been back to the theater a couple of times since then, and I'm hoping nothing like that happens again. This happened when I was working part-time at a ramen restaurant. I first got that job when I was around 16 years old. During my early years as a high school student, this happened in my hometown of Kyoto in the Shiga Prefecture. The ramen restaurant I worked in was inside a shopping department. I worked nearly every weekday after school, serving customers and operating the register. I would start at about 7 o'clock and work right up to midnight on most nights, cleaning and closing down usually. Opposite the register, there was a row of seats for anyone in the mall to use who needed to have a break. They were used by everyone, not just customers of our restaurant. My experience happened about a year and a half into working there, making me a 17-year-old at the time. I should also note that I'm a woman. On one of my shifts, my manager and co-worker both approached me during a lull and asked me the following. Hey, Erica, do you have any older friends around here? I was a bit confused by their question, but I quickly responded with a simple no. I didn't want to be asked weird personal questions like that by my manager and co-workers. They were kind of shocked and shook their heads in what disagreement or surprise would be. I wasn't sure at the time. My manager said, I see. I didn't know why they asked me such a random question. I didn't know what they were talking about at all. I went back to work and kind of shook it off. A few weeks went by when the co-worker came up to me again. Hey, Erica, why don't you uh, go to the bathroom real quick and come back after a while, okay? This was obviously weird. I stood there confused. The manager came over and I asked both of them what was going on, but neither of them would give me a proper answer. The manager simply said it was an experiment and told me to do it real quickly. I did what was asked and went back and forth from there in the bathroom. I didn't understand what the point of this so-called experiment would be though. After going to the bathroom and standing there for a while, I came back to looks of concern on my co-worker and manager's faces. My manager frowned and pulled me to the side. I think you might be being followed by an older man. I couldn't really understand what they meant by that. I guess that was because I was young and a little bit naive. I hadn't experienced anything like that, so I couldn't really process why an older man would have any interest in following me. I asked them what was going on. The pair of them made a subtle glance across to the row of seats. I looked in that direction and saw a random old man sitting there. He was looking our direction, but the instant he saw that I'd seen him, he snapped his head away. I had no idea who this guy was. I felt a little creeped out by his presence. He was certainly looking at me. I asked my co-workers why they thought he was following me. I mean, sitting outside of a restaurant is allowed. I didn't know what was going on, so I let them explain. 
Well, I started noticing that every time you're on shift, that guy always sits right over there, and he looks at you the whole time. When you leave work or get up and go, he gets up too and starts following you. Seems to me like he's stalking you. It really scared the heck out of me. Not quite like a ghost story or horror film, but something much more visceral. They say people are way scarier than fiction. I looked over at the man again. I wanted to make sure I was sure I didn't know him. I studied his face, and I was absolutely certain he was a stranger. I got a really weird feeling inside when I realized that. Kind of disgusted, kind of numb. After they told me that he'd been watching me, I just couldn't get it out of my mind while I worked. I spent my whole shift either looking over my shoulder or looking straight at him. I would make casual glances in an attempt to not make eye contact with him. When I left for home that night, the guys made sure they walked with me. Later, when I was alone though, I looked over my shoulder and saw the middle-aged creepy man was still following me from a distance. I realized in that moment that I really was being stalked. I got home just fine that night, but my god was it nerve-wracking. I couldn't tell if the guy just happened to walk home the same way or if he was intending to follow me all the way to my place. I wasn't sure what was going on entirely. I couldn't just go off of what my co-workers' theories were. I mean, they were hardly detectives. I really didn't want to, but I decided to give the man who gave me the creeps the benefit of the doubt. My thoughts changed when I went back to work the following night, though, because the man was right back at it. It was clearly much more than just a coincidence. I went to the bathroom and noticed that he was waiting outside while I was in there. Later on my break, I needed to go to the convenience store, and when I left, I realized he followed behind me. He watched me go in, and to my surprise, he left after. I headed back to the restaurant and saw his familiar figure sat on the seat opposite my work area. He watched me return to the store and never took his eyes off me. I asked my co-worker and manager to continue keeping an eye out for this weirdo. I didn't know what I should do. Chillingly, I heard one of my colleagues say that my new stalker was seen going into the same convenience store as me right after I left. Apparently, he bought the exact same things as me. He was taking an interest in all the magazines I picked up as well and flipped through it all. It was all piling up on me. I felt like he was there from the moment I started my shift until the moment I finished. I didn't know what I could accuse him of, though. How much trouble would it bring me if I accused him and it wasn't taken seriously? I was so creeped out at this point that I began to resent going to work altogether. To the job I really enjoyed, I was beginning to feel frightened more and more regularly. My manager picked up on how anxious the man made me and went to the security guard with a complaint about the man. The security guard went over to the creepy guy and made a big scene, then moved him on. It worked though, and it started working fast because in a matter of moments, the man was gone. He power walked away from the row of seats while his face turned bright red from being caught. I was really relieved. My relief was short-lived though. A few days later, the man was right back and up to his same old tricks. He was watching me and following me again. My manager started getting really angry at this guy. He stormed over to the security guard of our department store and told him to tell that man he was not allowed to return. If he tried to come back, we would be filing a police report. The security guard went right on over to the creep, who was sat on the seats opposite our restaurant. He gave him that strong warning, and once again the guy got up and stormed out, as if he had been embarrassed somehow. I hoped he would really learn this time around. I hoped the threat of a police report might have done the job. We all felt confident he would not be back again. And for the first time in a long while, it was quite the enjoyable shift for me. I was able to work with peace of mind until closing time. I can't tell you how nice it was to glance up from the register and not see him watching me. When everything closed down for the evening, it was time to head home. 
Little did I know, my journey home that night was going to be much more memorable than usual. I headed to the underground parking lot to get my vehicle. It was always dark down there, especially when I got off the late night shift. I unlocked my bike and hopped on. I went to push off to get going, but for some reason my bike wouldn't move. I tried to push off again and nothing happened. I didn't know what was wrong with it. I didn't need this on top of all that was going on at work. I turned to see if my back wheel was caught on something. And that was the moment when I faced my stalker eye to eye. He was standing there, both hands wrapped tightly around my back tire, preventing me from leaving. It was terrifying. It seemed as if he literally had stepped out of the shadows. I had no idea he was even in the underground lot with me. I was so scared. I couldn't make a sound. I tried to push off again. I tried to scream, but nothing would come out. Nothing was working. It was at that point I realized he was muttering something. He was saying, Why? Why? Over and over again. Something like that. I don't know why, but something about that kind of changed me at that point. Like a switch that needed to be flipped was. I exchanged my fear for anger. I turned around and started screaming at him. What do you think you're doing? Let go of my bike! I didn't expect him to snap back at me with a, Why did you do that? Why did you say you were going to the police? What on earth were you thinking? His words really creeped me out. Even beyond how he'd been behaving up until that point. I think it was because it was all so one-sided. It was all about him, and not the trouble he'd been causing me. Look, you're scaring me. Let go right now, I said. I knew that embarrassment seemed to work on him before, so I tried to make him feel embarrassed again. He snapped right back at me in a louder voice, saying, I never put my hands on you. Are you kidding me? You call the cops just because I looked at you? But luckily, our heated exchange of words had alerted a mall security guard to come rushing over. As soon as that creep noticed security was coming his way, he bolted off and ran, with his tail tucked between his legs. After that encounter, my manager demanded police patrols around the area to make sure that if the guy showed up again, he would be met with the police. Even though cops were walking about the mall, I couldn't help but think he would show up at any moment while I was working. I began to get super anxious whenever anyone would look my way for more than a second or two. I was growing more and more paranoid by the day. I had to leave that job in the end and got into a university hundreds of miles away. I'm glad I left that area to be honest. One thing I still have trouble getting over all these years later is the fact he was so angry at me for daring to report his behavior. I caught a glimpse of his sociopathic world, a man with no ethics or empathy, a man who said this to a 17-year-old girl who was scared and tired of being followed by him. His excuse was that he never put his hands on me. Are you kidding me? He knew what he was doing. He knew when to leave when the security guard came. He knew he had to hide from police presence in the mall. He knew how to gaslight and try to manipulate me into believing I was going to be in the wrong for reporting him. All I can say is that I'm very grateful for all the people that helped me through that issue. If it wasn't for my co-workers, then I don't know what would have happened to me. A year ago in midwinter, I was staying at an Airbnb on the east coast of the US. I had a family member that was sick, and I wanted to be nearby for a few weeks, just in case of any emergencies. While staying there, I figured I might as well make a vacation of it, since I'd really be doing nothing else. The Airbnb I got was a modern cabin, with a small lake behind it. Most of the area around was a forest as well, so it was very nice. It was a very different landscape from where I lived. Anyway, about a week after I'd gotten there, I rented out some camping equipment and thought it would be nice to go out by the lake and maybe spend a night on the beach. The Airbnb was only a short walk away if there was any trouble, so it wasn't really too much of an adventure. 
I just wanted to lay out by the stars and clear my head for a while. I made a few walks to bring out all the equipment, and then set up the tent. It was actually really easy because it was made for beginners, so I had plenty of time to get everything set up as well. Once everything was done, I kicked back and relaxed, sipping on a beer as I watched the sun set. The calm sound of the campfire along with the forest was something I missed having. I lived in a big city for so many years. Maybe 20 minutes or so after the sun had set though, I was caught off guard by a random man walking up to my campsite. I stood up as a natural reaction. The man seemed to see my worriedness as he stopped walking and put his hands up in the air, apologizing for the big scare. He was about the same age as me, mid-thirties, very tall and skinny. I looked past at the part of the forest he came from. There was no path from what I could see, just a large collection of trees that backed all the way up to the lake. Where did you come from? The man made a short grin, as he said he was staying in a place on the other side of the lake. He saw my campfire, so he thought he'd come out and have a beer with me. I gave a nervous smile. That wasn't exactly a normal thing to do, especially not way out in the middle of a forest. On second thought, I was pretty sure there were no houses at all on the other side of the lake. Actually, I'm not really looking for company right now. Sorry. I hoped this would be a quick and harmless interaction. The man seemed almost puzzled by my response. His grin immediately went to a dead straight face. He glanced at the Airbnb behind me and stayed quiet. After a few moments of silence, he said okay and walked back the way he came. I watched trying to keep track of him to see where exactly he was going to, but he faded out into the darkness of the woods. He didn't even have a flashlight on him. Feeling pretty unnerved, I decided to grab most of my stuff and haul it back to the Airbnb, not wanting to risk being outside with this guy. Trying to carry everything at once, though, was a bad move on my part. It really exhausted me, only getting halfway to the house before I needed to stop for a breather. I heard heavy footsteps coming from the woods and turned to see the man storming straight out of the tree line and right toward me. There was a look of insanity in his eyes. I dropped everything and tried to run, but immediately got knocked to the ground. He tackled me, and we both tumbled onto the grass. I somehow managed to scramble to my feet before he could get a hold of me again. The man ran close behind, though, even getting close enough to grab my shirt in an effort to stop me. When I arrived at the house, I knew I'd have no time to unlock the door. I had to go straight for my car. I pulled the keys out of my pocket as I ran up to it, getting inside and locking it just before he arrived at the door. I turned it on and put it in reverse. The man began slamming his fists into the window before it shattered altogether. He reached in and grabbed my arm. I backed up, swinging the front of the car in his direction. It must have caught him by surprise, because he didn't move fast enough to get out of the way. All I saw was his body slamming onto the ground and not getting up as I drove away. I called for help immediately while I drove, warning the police to get there quickly to get some answers out of him. When they got there, though, the man was gone. All that was left of him were some shoe prints leading back into the woods. This happened only a few months ago. I work at a small retail store in my hometown as an overnight employee. I do all the regular things like stocking shelves and taking inventory, sometimes unloading late arrival trucks as well. The job is very chill, being that I'd usually work alone or with one other person. There was nobody there to boss me around all day. On this night, I was alone until 4 a.m. I had a lot to do. Over the course of an hour, I was in the aisles, the whole time not needing to go to the back room for anything. At around 11.30 or so, though, I thought I could hear a strange noise coming from the back area. I walked down to the end of the aisle I was in and looked around. 
I went into the warehouse room, and right as I entered, I noticed there was a knock on the back door. That door was only used for truck drivers when delivering a load. I was never notified about any deliveries on this night, though. Being a large metal door, there was no peephole or glass to look out of and see who was there. I walked over to the delivery bay and opened the garage just a crack. Just as I'd initially assumed, there was no truck to be seen. I was almost hoping there would be, though, because now I was really skeptical as to who was knocking on the back door, especially in the middle of the night. A few minutes went by, and no more knocks or sounds came from the door. I even pressed my ear right up against it and tried to listen in. I was pretty sure that whoever had been out there was gone now. Being curious and slightly dumb though, I opened the door just a bit to make sure nobody was lingering out there. I peered out into the unlit driveway, running behind the building. There were no cars and no people, not even any sounds at all. It was just empty and quiet. Seeing this and thinking back on that loud knocking, I felt a shiver go through me. I slammed the door closed and walked back to the aisle I was in before and tried to get back to work. I didn't want to be worrying about it too much with so much left to go. Through the next couple of hours, I went in and out of the back room several times, but didn't hear anything else. It was around 2 a.m. at this point, and I was finishing up stalking one of the middle aisles. That was when a quiet but recognizable sound came from the back once more. It was the metal door clicking shut. My face went white as I froze up. I didn't hear anything else, but I knew I had to check on it. I walked very quietly, still listening as I approached the back doors. At first glance, looking around the warehouse, I didn't see anything. I made my way further in and toward the back door. It was closed. Being that it only opens from the inside, I was confused trying to think of what could have even happened. I turned and looked down the hall of lined up boxes when I saw a figure facing me. He stood at the end of the hallway, seeming to have just rounded the corner not expecting to see me. After a short moment of shock, the man started sprinting at me. He was large and intimidating, with a look of anger in his eyes. As he came barreling down the hallway, I ran for the door and into the grocery aisle, trying to make it to the front of the store. The sound of the man's thudding footsteps behind me was horrifying. At the same time I got to the front, the footsteps stopped. I pulled my keys out and unlocked the door. I shoved the door open and looked back. I saw the man standing at the end of the aisle, just watching me. Without hesitation, I ran to the parking lot and got into my car, calling 911. By the time the cops arrived, the man was long gone. There were no traces of where he'd gone. Through the security footage, we managed to catch the man wedging something into the back door somehow unlocking it and allowing him to slip inside. Once he was in, he looked around as if trying to find something in particular before he saw me and chased me to the front. Why he let me leave, and why he even broke in in the first place, is still unknown. I don't know what would have happened had the man caught up to me, or decided not to let me leave, but I'm thankful it never had to come to that. I was 15 and babysitting some neighbor's kids, aged 4 and 2 respectively. Throughout the night I had heard some banging on the side of the house, which was kind of putting me off. When the kids were in bed I thought I was just gonna snooze until the parents got back. I had grabbed a kitchen knife though because those noises were really unsettling me. All of a sudden I heard a huge bang from down in the basement. I went to check downstairs when I heard someone whisper from the darkness, Are you ready to die? I thought, holy shit. I sprinted upstairs and grabbed the knife, then ran and football grabbed the kids as well. 
I sprinted out of the house and heard footsteps following behind me. My adrenaline was pumping, and I thought, holy shit, I gotta get these kids to safety right now. I ran down the street to my house and slammed on the door until my parents came. I practically threw the kids inside because I thought whoever this was was still right behind us. Needless to say, I was freaking out. My mom called the neighbors, and my dad went over with a crowbar in hand. I sat on the porch bawling my eyes out. Fifteen minutes later, my dad returned. He said there was nobody there. The house was all clear. He took the knife from me, which I was clinging onto for dear life. The neighbor was Scottish and gave me a shot of whiskey, along with my shoes which I had forgotten at their house. I remember that feeling as I was running down the staircase with the kids. All I could think was that I had to get them to safety. I was expecting the man to chase us, and I was ready to fight if I had to. Four years later, and I still have no idea what happened, I still have nightmares about that experience. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now, guys, so thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.